well, 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 well. Fuck you, man. You don't know DJ Mark. You may disagree, but up to me, it's a fact. You can't run it back. It ain't no fun in that. Yeah, the sermon about to start, so I hope you know your stats. And if Kev get it wrong, then Rashad gon' have his back with, with the facts. Matter of fact, all we do is say win. Wins when wins, congregation say amen. Trades, debates, wins, losses, the latest news, bruh. Prophet Kev speak, you got him saying hi. Right, welcome to Preach Kev, Preach with Rashad here in the episode. Another sermon coming to you for Wildcard Sports. Here on Wildcard TV, Rashad, what's going on, man? Shoot, just living the life, man. Hope everybody had a safe, fun Memorial Day weekend. Definitely, definitely, uh, safe. Uh, we got, I got, I, I haven't done this in a while, so I gotta, gotta bring my koala in the back. What it do, baby? Yeah. What it do, baby? To everybody out there, like, like Rashad, so I hope you had a good, uh, safe Memorial Day weekend, <clears throat> bro. I was chilling. I ain't gonna lie to you. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't do nothing. I, I drove down to see the family. Uh, then drove back Monday night. So you know, my, my Memorial Day was on the road. So I don't know about you, but <laughs> I was on the road. Sometimes it's all you need, man. It's a little family time. Even it's just. Keep it chill. Yeah, but I say yeah. So I went, I went home this weekend, and guess who was with home? The damn Celtics. <laughs> so yeah, they, they are done. <laughs> they are done. So that's what we gonna start our show with tonight. Hey, so so this what before we get into the Celtics, I I, I kind of posed this question. I want to see like where your thoughts is on this one. Um, the all right. So we are we know being down 3 nobody has ever done an NBA. Only happened once in baseball. Only happened four times in hockey. So it's a very, very low percentage that you're going to win because you have to win four versus I got to just get one. That's a, If you got to get one, that's, that's way better than four, right? So that's why it doesn't happen uh, at all, really, because it's, it's, it's too hard to do that. Being, you know, if we, if we go 1-1 one, one, and then you go up 3-1, that's a different story. I got to win three. So people got to realize that it is a hard battle, first off, to even come to this point. Only what, three teams prior to Boston got to game seven. Um, that was uh, way back in the fifties. I forgot what team it was in fifties, but you had uh, you had what, what was it? The Blazers in 03, and they lost. They ended up losing to Dirk Nowitzki's uh, Mavericks, and then you had I'm, I'm blanking on the team that did it. Was it the Nuggets? Uh, it wasn't Nuggets. I forgot what team it was, but they, they lost to Carl uh, Malone and and, and uh, the Jazz uh, back in I think ninety six or ninety seven, somewhere around there. So anyway, it only happened three times. Prior, Boston got to this point. So my question to you is, uh, I want to pose the question is, did Miami collapse or did, did they just survive? Um, well, I guess what I mean by that is like, you know, you, you, you got two home games and you lost both of them. Yes, the, that Derrick White t- put back was crazy. Can you, and you should have won right there. But you also was down 10 in that game. Pretty much Boston controlled the whole game until the end. So did, did Miami just, just survive? Like, do you think if, they, if it was 3-1, Instead of being three zero, like Boston Park could have came back and won. Like, what are your what are your thoughts on that? No, it played out how it was going to play out, regardless. I mean, Miami's been down ten in plenty of the games, and you know Boston didn't play up to their potential some of the games. But at the same time, that's because the other team is playing and running certain schemes that kind of make you miss shots or make you turn the ball over. So it played out how it was meant to play out. You know. Granted, you don't want a team to win three straight, but I don't think either team lost four straight all season. So the odds of that happening were pretty slim. Mm-hmm. But uh, no, nah, Miami just had the better coaching. They, I mean, they could have finished it in game six if it wasn't for that Derek White putback. But this is kind of how it played out. I mean, both teams fought hard until until the end for the most part. You know, Boston gave everything they had in that game six. Miami just uh. Jimmy got the free throws, but a slight miscommunication or a slight delay by Struess on getting back to White, and you get a putback. Yeah, I'm about to say now. Now we had to play a whole another forty minute, uh, forty minutes basketball because we we uh we got a little collapses. But somebody said somebody was like, you think you think if uh if Tatum took that shot, does Derrick White crash as hard or like do you like because of Marcus Smart? Like, oh, I know he gonna miss. <laughs> no, that's what I heard on I heard on the radio. I saw I bust out laughing. I mean, the the whole defensive scheme was to take Tatum away. I mean, that's why they didn't have Struz guarding the inbound. He was face guarding the floor. So, I mean, Jim was on Tatum. Struz was basically going to collapse on Tatum regardless. So, it was just a, a delayed closeout to get back to White, which was going to be a hard 
a hard follow anyway because he's running from out of bounds to the the basket for a potential put back. So it's just kind of how it play out. It's just the nature of the game. I'm gonna say, and then they 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 put the shot. They put the seconds before that to three seconds. Where I kind of because thought they foul on Jimmy. It was kind of it, it's low key could have been you could you could have said two point eight if you wanted to you know what I mean like it could have been it yeah. could it could have been and that way you wouldn't have had enough time for that um but anyway yeah so then then game seven happens and I mean and, and I I guess I guess going into that game like I think the the world the world lean Boston but like you said how many people was losing uh, those two teams losing four straight all season and to me. I I was like, man, if Spo loses this game, how 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 am I going to defend when I say it? Oh, Spo was top five or top seven coach of all time, and he got this you know collapse of zero and three, right? And I was like, man, I really I I really want Miami to win the game because I don't want to have to to defend that, right? Because Jimmy, I think this is the third time Jimmy said we're gonna get it done, we're gonna get it done. He lost the first two times you said it, and then but this time you did you did get it done. Um. And I don't even, I don't even know who I mean if you if you had to do like a a a chart of who was more responsible for this it's like did did Spo have the have a great game plan or did Boston just do what they do like I see people say like they are who we thought they 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 were would they just be shooting threes and nothing happening they just and they keep shooting threes and hoping like the 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 the, the door finally open um. What are your thoughts on like I, I guess in Game Seven? Like, what did you see? Like, it went wrong. For, either went wrong for Boston or what Miami did right. I mean, they were kind of even lucky to get it to that point. I mean, you're already down three zero. The other four, five, and six played out how they play. So you're even you were fortunate to even get it to that point. But yeah. uh, once the game started, Tatum rolls his ankle, so that kind of deflates your team a little bit. That deflates the crowd a little bit. Um, Boston never did figure out the Miami zone. I mean, it's been 14 games in a row dating back to last postseason to this postseason. So 14 games, and they still haven't figured out the zone, uh, which is fair because, I mean, a zone isn't something that's played a lot in the NBA, and they're not playing like a standard 2-3 or a 3-2. They're just kind of shading it to whatever side you need to shade it to to make the ball go back the opposite way, and you don't ever get a shot until it's too late to get a three. So, I mean, you got to discredit everybody for – being prepared, coaching staff being prepared, correct scheme. You got to applaud guys like Struz, Vincent, I mean, Caleb Martin going crazy, having a career series. You got to just salute everybody for being prepared and open to taking the shots. I mean, that's just some of that's coaching, the putting guys in position, these guys putting in the practice time, putting in the reps to knock these shots down. Uh, when something's not working, making something happen, driving to the basket. Um, but yeah, Boston just never really did figure out that that zone. I mean, you can say they, to a certain extent, they kind of didn't have to figure it out some other games because they were hitting their threes, which that kind of erases everything. But when this stuff is not falling, nobody's attacking the basket, drawing fouls, you're going to lose games like that because you can't just live and die by the three because one or the other will happen. You're going to make them and live, or you're going to miss <laughs> them all and die. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, one, one or the other. I, I, I think, and, and this. This is crazy. Boston is such a terrible, a terrible home team. Like I think it is a it's it, dating back to like Charles Barkley's ninety three Suns, um, Ellen Iverson Sixers oh one, and then the last two Boston twenty two and twenty three where they they're all losing six games and like you're losing six games and you ain't like Boston didn't make the finals yet right so you, you would you probably lost some more and, and my thing is like for Boston like. Maybe maybe we really should have seen this coming just because, like, the Hawks, like, did, did we not think the Hawks was going to get swept? Like, I know I did. Like, I, I didn't. I mean, if you're going to get Trey one just because it's Trey Young, maybe. But, I mean, my guess was a sweep there. And, what, it was in six, right? So, you know, the the fact that the Hawks pushing that, then you got the Sixers who didn't have NBA one game, and they, they still st- stole home court and, Fact, the fact that you go to Game Seven, I think I think Six went up there and, and took two in Boston. Like, what are we what are we doing? You know what I mean? So um, maybe we, we probably should have seen this coming. And I, I heard somebody say like, uh, you know, everybody keep bringing up the Miami being the eight seed and you know, uh, Boston the better team. I'm thinking like, well, maybe Boston is the more talented team, but I don't know. I don't know if you could say at any point in this series they were better than Miami Heat. Like even the games where like. 
I mean, because Miami would dominate two of them, and Boston got lucky on on in Game Six. It's like I don't know. It, it, I I think I think the Game Four game to me is the only game of, of Boston that I I said okay, that's what I'm talking about because you put your 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 back against the wall, bro. You was about to get swept by the the Heat, who had no business, quote unquote, being there, and you gonna lay down. And I, I'm I'm glad they didn't because like. You go to the other side of the West with Lakers and Nuggets. The Lakers never laid down in no game. They might have blew, they might have got blown out early in game one, but they fought back. Or being up game four and then they blew the lead, whatever. But they was competitive all, all the way around, and you couldn't say that for Boston until until you saw them win game four. So I don't know. Um, I don't know about Boston, man. Shout out to Miami for for doing what is supposed to be done, which is take advantage of every opportunity. Uh, guys like like you mentioned, Caleb Martin and Gabe Vincent, these guys are about to get a, a, a nice little check for what they've done. And the fact that they was like five minutes away from losing to the Bulls in the play, in a, in a second playing game to to find yourself in the championship, yo, that's is that that's impressive as as uh on its own. Um, but my big thing about you know we talk about like uh, I think I said last week last we did like the Lakers overachieved or whatever like that in their, in their series uh you know this season, um. In this one, it's like Miami, for what they are, an AC, they overachieved. But could you could you make the point that they 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 underachieved all year and put themselves in this hole anyway to be to be in the playing game to lose to Atlanta and you know and now you have to go through this tremendous like breakdown of playing the Bucks and playing uh playing Boston. Now you got to play a Denver. Like this this was the same team that won see last year, and. I, I don't. I mean, aside from adding Kevin Love and and your role player, your underdrafted guys got better. Like, why was you in this position in the first place? And I know we got the regular season, and Jimmy don't turn it on to the playoffs. But um, here we here we are. I mean, the, the, the Heat the Heat made it, and it's like, damn, I wish you would have been doing this all year instead of waiting to the playoffs. But nonetheless, here they are. No, nah, I mean they just uh. I mean, so it just kind of plays out how it plays out. I mean, yeah, they are the eight seed, but at the same time, you know, they're that franchise, that heat culture, they believe let's just get in and we can match up with anybody and we'll win. I mean, that's really what they've done. They yeah, you can say Giannis would miss basically three games. They still had to beat them when he was in the game. So they still got past them. Uh they played uh the Hawks. In the play-in, uh, they beat uh, the in the second round. round. Yeah, I mean, and you still got to look at, okay, injuries are part of the game. Like, Oladipo's out, solid bench player for them. Harrell's out, solid contributor for them. So, I mean, they weathered the storm just like everybody just weathered the storm. I mean, yeah. it's just part of the game. You know, you, the, the Styles make the fights, and, they, uh, and they've won all their fights so far. Let's see what they can do against Denver. Yeah, uh, so – I, and I guess I guess the next thing is everybody talk about is like before we get be done with Boston is what what is the next step I I I put on Facebook today like I just don't I just don't know I, I've never seen I never seen two a, a duo where like they don't complement each other and I don't I don't think they I mean, like when you watch Tatum go off you don't ever see like Brown help like Brown's not doing anything to help that. Or will Brown go off? Tatum not doing anything to help that, or on most cases, like when you see a duo like Clay and Steph, right? They they running off each other, screening for each other, doing doing stuff that helps that helps each other, you know, be better. Or or, or if you want to say Draymond and Curry, or how you want to say it, or you see like Jamal Murray and Jokic in this playoffs, and, and that's why I like most duos. You see, it's the big and the guard, or you know, what I'm saying like it's, it's mostly that's what it mostly is. And you, you got your you got your outliers. Kawhi and Paul George are what you want Tatum and Brown to be when it comes to like helping each other, where they both play defense, they both feed off each other. Paul George will say, you know what? Kawhi going crazy. I'm going to facilitate, get my boy the ball. Kawhi like, you know what? Today's not my shot, but Paul George going crazy. I'm going to defend and rebound. And that I think that's I think that's their biggest – that would all be their biggest knock is like – I think I said uh, – you remember on the All the Smoke podcast, Jalen Brown was saying like Jason is – the like finesse guy, he's the more aggressive guy, and they they pick each other where they where, where one of them lack. But I don't I don't I don't really see that playing out in the, in the games. Um, and I'm not saying that the idea is to trade 
Jalen Brown or nothing like that, but it is an option. But it's like, what do we have to do to get these duo, this duo to like take that next step? Because you got all these conference finals, but like you're not. I mean, and you, and you got what one finals appearance, but it's like to me, it's like man, they just been they a two man show, but they do it by themselves. And I don't, I don't know. I, I know Boston got a lot of like CBA stuff they got to work out with. Broad in contract and smart being paid there. White, Robert Williams. You can't afford Grant Williams. Gallo making 13 mil didn't even play this year. They got they got they got a lot of issues. So I guess what's your like? I mean, I mean, what do you see as far as like like the the best plan for Boston? Because I feel like you have a lot of directions to go. Um, and obviously it requires the market, the trade market. But is there is there a, a perfect solution that you see for Boston? No, they're just going to be – they're going to probably run it back next year because, I mean, even trading-wise, there's not much you're going to get back that – I mean, Brown just made all NBA, so you're kind of like – they're 25 and 26 years old, so if you trade one of them, it's like, am I really getting fair value? And if you were to trade one, it's going to probably be Jalen Brown. I mean, both guys are super max eligible. So you're looking at if we keep them together for the next five years, you're basically going to be committing like a hundred million to them. Uh, so, cause they're going to be making like $50 million a piece at some point. So you're kind of, um, and the CBA is just going to eat you up with that. And the rest of your roster is going to slowly dwindle down. Um, I don't know. They, there's really no, no perfect thing. Cause, uh, you're kind of you're kind of committed to the roster for the next two seasons, so you may have to start trying to move some things off because you're going to be on that second April of the, the uh, luxury tax, and you would assume their leadership doesn't mind paying it, but at the same time, you want to see it pay off with the win, a championship win at that. But there's really no permanent solution. I mean, you can break up a young core, you can try to retool your roster and just move around some pieces, but at, at what cost does all that yeah. that take place? Do you you know they got they got the Joe Mazzula stuff? Did he redeem himself coaching wise? Do you get a new coach? Do you bring him back? So they are semi in flux, but they're probably going to just run this thing back next year because if you just said look at everybody in the East right now, they're going to be the favorite going into next year to win the East again. So they're probably going to just run it back and then just deal with Brown's contract extension after next year. Do you all right? So on that point, do you think they should should be the favorite as far as like of expectations of what you've seen so far? I mean, cause, I mean, again, you're you're a game seven away from at home from from getting the final, so it's not like you're that far off. But like, it's like it's like to me, bro. It's like when you have Marcus Smart, Brogdon, and Derrick White. That's that's three combo guards. That's kind of like do the same thing: defense, shoot threes, and can dribble. Right, but 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 I don't think none of those three guys make anybody better. And have you have you ever seen a defensive player of the year not dictate a game? Because I think this this is why Bigs always win this award. Because out who who you most scared of? Derrick White or Marcus Smart? And that's like I was most scared of Derrick White as far as like a if I'm a Miami Heat who guarded me, smart on me. I, I'm I'd rather have that than Derrick White, especially he made what second team this year. So it's like I'm I'm trying to figure out, man, what kind of value does like a Marcus Smart? I, I know he brings, you know, I know he brings value. I'm not trying to say that, but I'm saying it's like for the fifth play of the year, especially all all that crying he was doing, he let K- Kayla Martin was getting whatever he wanted, and Gabe Vince got whatever he wanted, and I'm trying to figure out like if we're gonna move on with somebody, you know, we got three. I think I think you got three pretty redundant pieces in in white, broad, and smart. Um, I would love to see them do. I would love to see them get. A strictly pass first point guard, somebody like like I know I know the money won't match, and, and obviously you you like if you could if you could just put him on this team, like does, does Chris Paul or Russ work for this team, like or somebody in that nature where like they can be pass first, it ain't gotta be those two guys exactly, but like somebody that's like pass first who wanna who can help everybody else gel together because to me it's just like they just pass pass around to somebody can get a shot, and I don't know if that's. I don't know if that's always going to work, and it, it obviously it didn't work against Miami in Game Seven. Uh, I don't know. They um, they're just in a weird spot. They have to. They're just in, they're just in a weird little spot roster wise, and the CBA that 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 thing coming into play really don't 
help them a lot either. Uh, their best bet is just going to be running back. I don't really see what um what wiggle room you have because I mean Smart and Brock. I mean everybody's in the same situation if they have to get in line for the CBA. So nobody's gonna probably want to bail you out with these contracts. So you kind of gotta just roll it back and see what see what happens. <laughs> yeah, nobody nobody's gonna bail you out because I mean we, we had a conversation. I was like, Marcus Smart and Brock, and they're not gonna get because if you if you're gonna trade them away. How often, like you said, are you gonna get that? I don't think you'll get value enough value for Smart and or Brogdon. Like, I don't he, like you talking about Jalen Brown. You won't I mean, get it's you won't. Consider value and everything, but uh, they're probably gonna have to roll it back and make moves at the deadline or something next year. But I mean, everybody's gonna have to figure out a way to get in line with a new CBA. Are they gonna be a tax apron team or not? So, I mean, nobody's really gonna be inclined to just help them out because then it may mess up their future cap situation. So. Yeah. Nobody's gonna be inclined to help them on that. If if you if you uh if you can get a pick pick a another star to go alongside like let's let's say Boston said we we gonna trade Jalen Brown right now. Like who would who, like who you think pay like he, he like fit better with? Like is that is that a big or a guard or because like I'm think I'm just, it ain't gotta be a specific player but like do you do you do you think he, they should have like a, a a better front court player to put him more at the three or more like a pass first guy that, that that gets him, you know, get him going or whatever. No, you kind of need a, a big guy. I mean, you could say it. I don't know. Tatum is versatile, so you could say a guard. So that way, he's not always. I don't know. It, it just kind of depends. Like you know, you wouldn't mind seeing him with like a like a probably like a Devin Booker type, or more of a scorer type, because that way he can you can get some two man action going with the. A guy like him or a guy like a Bradley Bill get some two man action going stuff like that. Right. But um I don't think you're those those aren't feasible moves. You're not gonna swap out Brown for for Bill when oh, no, Brown no. is younger and you're yeah. not gonna get Booker off the sun. So there's really not anything out there for them to get that's gonna feel like it's a, a good trade. I was say the the only one that came to mind and, and I don't even I don't even know. I think the I think the media is pushing this. I don't even think Minnesota said it, but like I don't think Minnesota said Cat is on the block per se, because to me they ha- they haven't got a chance to run that team fully healthy. But like does 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 Cat fit J- J- Tatum, or or he, he because, because he's more of a, a stretch big, not really. I mean they can play together. I mean like that's a it's not a bad combo. They will uh, you just have to see it on the court. I'm not sure how well they'll compliment each other but you kind of got to see it on the court so you can get both guys in some some screening action like just some two-man games so that's really what you need because i mean you can't do two-man game stuff with Tatum and brown because all you're gonna do is just when somebody switches oh well now you got the, the best defender like you don't thing. it don't solve it don't, it don't solve anything you don't have yeah. a mismatch like when brown and a you run a two-man game or yoga jamur run a two-man game yep and now you take advantage of a different defender versus Brown and Tatum, you, okay, well, now you got the second best defender on you. Like, you're not taking advantage of anything. You're just swapping the ball. Yep, great point. Right. That's a great point. Um, now, you're right. I, I And I, I agree with that point. When you when you pick a roll, when you two men game with Tatum and Brown, it's the same thing. Small force and shooting guard probably switch each other. Yeah, so, yeah, you're right. Um, all right, so let's move on for them. Boston, you, you're you done. Um, and we go to the finals, man. We got we got Denver Nuggets and Miami Heat. Um, I, I, I so I've been thinking about like, all right, so I'm going Nuggets, and I, I think I think we already had declared like that, like that last week that we was going <clears throat> Nuggets to win the championship, regardless who 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 came out. Um, and what I'm very interested to see is is what what gives in. Does the does the rest hurt Denver, Denver Nuggets game one, or does the fact that they had that altitude kind of like counterbalance that? Oh, we're the heat is in rhythm, blah blah. Cause we ain't we don't got, got that many days off. Because I think I think Denver wins game two. Like obviously we just we just guessing and obviously you know we don't know what, what happens in game one. But if Denver probably win game two, if Denver can win game one, cause they won every game one so far. But so has Miami. Miami won a row every game one and won. So like if if like do you do you think Miami only chance is to win game game or, or like steal home court early because. I'm trying to think like if if Denver go two zero, I I got all the pot like all like faith and whatever in Denver to take a take one in Miami too, 
to beat 3-1 come back to Denver. So uh, what do you think about that, um, you know, going forward? Uh, Denver in five, at some point, I mean, Miami's been playing great, but at some point, you know, some of this stuff is just going – it's going to fall off the cliff at some point. I mean, you took advantage of all your matchups thus far. Your coaching is elite. I mean, you got guys playing out of their mind, but at some point it's, it's got to – I don't say that it's luck, but I just think at some point it, it runs out. And, I mean, I haven't picked them or Denver in any series, so I got to pick <laughs> one. This, so I'm going to take Denver. I mean, you got the you got the probably best player in the league, two-time MVP. Uh, you're just way more talented. I mean, I'm not going to say the coaching matchup is even, but it's definitely not a great disparity. It's not and, like it was last series. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, I don't see how you stop Jokic. Your two man game is gonna probably be pretty tough to defend. You have shooting, you have defense, you got everything Miami had except I think it's just a step and a half better. And uh I just think Denver can get it over in five. Maybe I mean you gotta give Miami some credit to maybe maybe get it to six, but I'll just say Denver in five. They celebrate their first championship at home. Yeah, so I I'm I'm thinking the same. I th- I think I think Denver definitely can get three one and come back to Denver. Um, I think especially if Denver take one game one and game two. Um, and and here here's more of the reason I'm picking probably picking Denver. It's not so f- like all right, so Tyler Hero go come back game three. We don't know how that's going to affect the rotation of the of, of Martin and Gabe and Duncan Robinson and those guys. You don't know how like who's going to play what there. So we'll see that what kind of adjustments Spo does in game three and what Denver does to counterbalance that adjustment. But, um. I don't think I don't think Bam has the ability to be the second best player, right, on in on the court. He he does he does because Jokic is there. I think I think Jokic is gonna be the best player, right? But I think the way Jamal Murray played in the Lakers series, if that Jamal Murray shows up in this in the Heat series and he has no answer for them, if he he might be the second best player on the court because LeBron. I mean, you you can you can make an argument. LeBron played great in that series, right? Like I think what he he probably averaged like. 20, 23. And, I mean, he had his, his normal career numbers. <laughs> right. So, so, LeBron, and, and I still think Jamal Murray was a better player in that series. So, if that's the case, if Jimmy's number three, there's no damn way you can beat Denver. Because to me, Jimmy got to be number one. And how, how are you going to be better than Jokic? Like, like, well, like Jokic is going to dictate the game on a, on a, on a whole other level. And, and Bam, Bam has a, Bam has a, a great opportunity to show him that I'm the best defensive player. Remember, he said he can guard one through five, right? Well, here's your chance to stop the best player in the world that AD couldn't do. So, you know, so you got your chances. I, I am going to see how Spoke going to try to guard it. But Jokic get the ball at the high post. I mean, you are you got to be very, very disciplined because he's going to throw the ball. And um, since the bubble, which was 2020, right, the Nuggets have not lost to the Heat. And that's with with that's with and without Jamal Murray. So, um, and the way Jamal Murray is playing on another level, I, I think, I think it's just, like you said, it just – it is too much for them to overcome again, and I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying you got to wish for injury, but that's the only way I see Miami get out of this is one is like Jamal or Jokic had to get banged up, kind of like how Tatum did in Game Seven. Like, so we'll see. I, I, I roll with you on this one. Um, Denver in five. If Miami take game, is that if Miami still home court? I got Denver. I, I'll take Denver in six, but I don't see Miami coming out of this series the way Denver been playing all season long. Too good, too talented, and the coaching matchup, like you said, that's where the, that's where it comes down to. Mike Malone will not get outclassed. He might get outcoached, but he won't get outclassed. And I, I think I think that's a different thing. So uh, I'll take different six. Yeah, I mean Jokic, he won't. His his game translates like they're not going to be living and dying by no threes and stuff like that. And Denver's just they they've been the best team in the league, damn near. The entire year, so they're here for a reason. Miami has gooded it out and made it here, but I just think at this point, the what Denver has, it's it's just gonna it's gonna be a, be a little bit too much. I don't think any game is a blowout. I think they're all gonna be close games, but because mm-hmm. just the preparation that Miami has and they've been playing out of their mind, but I think Denver can knock it out in five or six. Yeah, uh, uh, you, yeah, good point. Denver would not live and die by no three, and that's the thing. They can shoot the threes. KCP, Jamal Murray, of course. Jokic can hit three. Porter Jr. is going to be a problem in this series because the thing about Miami is 
You're kind of, so so when 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 Boston when Boston put the Derek White out there, it kind of forced the Heat to take Kevin Love out and put Jimmy and Caleb Martin, and that's why Caleb Martin got so many rebounds, right? He was he was playing he was playing that you know power forward small forward role, but in this series, if you do that, if if you're if you're going Bam Jimmy Caleb, you're undersized. By, I mean, they more likely will got your best players out there. So they probably yeah. will. So 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 in that case, you're, you're undersized by a long shot. Porter Jr. is not afraid to go get 10 rebounds a game. Bruce Brown is not afraid, afraid to go in there. Aaron Gordon is not afraid to go in there. And that's the thing. And I know Miami's not afraid either, of course. I'm not saying Miami no 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 girls no, oh, no, I can't say that. Uh, no no punks and all like that. But you're just gonna be undersized. And the fact that Jokers can can probably dictate how how the game goes. Yeah. Give me give me Denver. Uh, we we gonna have, we gonna have a championship on the pod because my cause, cause JB gonna come on and talk about this ride, you know what I'm saying? So we gotta get that, gotta, gotta get, make a minute happen. So we we gotta win a championship that way we we get a ring too. I'm gonna tell JB we need a ring. Um, I think Denver, they're not gonna make it. It's not gonna be easy, but they're no, gonna get it done. No, it for, will, the, it for that first one franchise here, they're they gonna get it done. Yeah, it would not. It would it would not be easy, to, and that's for sure. Um, but before we get out of here, we get, we got we got about six minutes left. Let's talk about um. Let's talk about some new some new coaching uh, ch- changes, man. Nick Nurse goes to Philly. Um, <laughs> the jokes are already saying like you know the player the player development, which was I guess the reason that like for uh, to, uh, Toronto let Nick Nurse go. That that's not that won't get better in Philly, right? There's no way he all of a sudden becomes a, p- a player development guy in Philly. Uh, and he he also plays his stars a lot. So MB, who's already injured prone, Jane Harden, who obviously right now is a free. Uh, you know, got a player option. Those guys are gonna play a lot of minutes. Is that going? You know, is that good or bad? You know, so um, your thoughts on Nick Nurse going there? Um, and does this is that an upgrade from Doc? Yeah, he's on a three year window. You better make the East Finals, or you fired too. I mean, that's, I mean, that's simple yeah, enough. M- Embiid already contract locked up. You're going into a new CBA. So you're gonna to try to get a second star, potentially pay Maxi. You're gonna be capped out. Capped out. So whether Harden stays or goes really don't matter because, I mean, I just don't think it's gonna work. Three, he got a three year window. I'm gonna same, say same as Doc, same as everybody. Three year window, and we'll see what happens. The the only difference you get is you you got some real X's and O's. So I do expect NB NB already scored thirty points now. I do expect. A more efficient NB, right? I expect the more I expect the more efficient offense. But that, what did Doc Rivers bring? Defense. <laughs> that's been his whole. That's been his calling card his whole career. Defense. So, is is, is defense going to lack and your offense get better? Is is, is is that what you really want? Is is that why you lost to Boston? Um. So you know, we'll see. I, I mean, we we both in agreement. Philly, Philly done. So. How long to NBA ask out is is my question. You know what I mean? Like that's what I'm be looking at because he's not gonna win in Philly. I wouldn't even give him a chance to. I just you got to go ahead and move with him before he get before you lower the price. When you get when you ask out, you lower the price. That's true. I about to say yeah. You 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 got to flip him at some point. Um, yeah, uh, I'm with you. I mean, because I don't. They're not, they're not going next year. So so my, my that's my whole thing about firing firing Doc. Like you're not going next year either. With with Nick Nurse and I love Nick Nurse. I think Nick Nurse one one of the best coaches in the league. So. You know, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what kind of moves that they make and what kind of changes. But like you said, Nate Nurse is not a player development type of guy. He's not like a. It's not a. It's not a San Antonio product, right? It's not a. You know, get you right. It's not the Golden State Warriors here. So, or Miami Heat. So uh, we'll see what Nate Nurse does um, with with the Sixers. He, but this the thing is, he got a better player than he had last year. So we'll see that <laughs> that makes a difference. Um, then we got the my Bucks man, fit the deer. Uh, Agent Griffin from the Toronto Raptors, assistant coach. Uh, I think he was more defensive based. Uh, he goes to Milwaukee. Um, I would say I'm just I'm just proud that an assistant coach who's been through the trenches, um, a former player, like got a got an opportunity is is the most thing. Like like um, and Giannis Giannis vouched for him. So uh, we'll see if this is a guy that can if he can command the locker room uh, and his if his guy if the guy's gonna follow him, uh, which. Milwaukee don't really have no ego guys, right? So obviously we know what the Bucks situation is. Do you pay Brook Lopez and bring him back? Do you do Chris Middleton opt in, which he will? Um, and how do you how do you build the the, the bench and, and get the depth right? So your thoughts on Adrian Griffin, man? 
uh, happy he got a job. I love when assistants get jobs. Um, but the only two concerns would be why did Toronto not promote him? Right. I always get concerned when guys don't get promoted internally. I mean, outside of the Spurs, where guys have to go take other jobs because Pop's not leaving, <laughs> or like Spo, where he's been there 15, 16 years, where he got promoted from within Miami. I always wonder why guys don't get promoted internally. So uh, happy he got a job, but to me, that's a slight I red flag. But a little cause to pause. Why did Toronto decide to keep him? And he's on a short leash as well, two years. When Giannis play option come up, if he decline, you're done. Yeah, because you're gonna get because you're gonna be losing. So, <laughs> so you you want a short leash as well, two years, and we'll see what what happens. So, because you're not gonna you, you probably won't win year one, and year two the pressure will really be on because Giannis can decline his player option after that. So yeah, that and short, him and Nurse same thing, man. Like these jobs are high pressure packed jobs because of the media markets or the players on that team. So happy he got the job, two year window. Let's see what happens because Giannis has two years in the play option. Middleton probably opt in. Then you got to figure out what happens with him, which he probably won't be brought back because he's not worth $30, $40 million right. going forward. Drew probably won't be back again at 35 well, $36, $38 million. You got to fill your bench out. Giannis might want to go to a major market. You just so, yeah, short, short. So, and, and that's what I want to ask you real quick. We got, we got like a minute left, but like, do, do like Milwaukee, I think Milwaukee done a great job, right? Got a championship as far as putting Giannis in the right situations. Um, and then you got the Mavericks, Luca. Like, are we are we going to see the international guys leave? Like, finally, because we didn't see we didn't see Dirk leave. We, I mean, for the most part, Paul Gasol was going to stay true until he got traded to Lakers. Um, but it, it was like we know the international guys, especially when the office built around them, they don't leave. So. I'm very interested to see the next few years. Do a guy like Luca? Do a guy like Giannis actually leave? Even with they got all the you know all the pieces and all the all the tools to the access code. So so that's gonna be very interesting to see because this is a new era of generation guys. So um, we'll see we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens there. Um, and before we get out of here, Warriors Bob Myers steps down. Um, do you do you think that's more so that he don't want to make the, the tough decisions? Or because he's just tired and, and want to do something else? It's running its course. It, always leave at a high point. This is a decent point. They had a good season. No need to burn it down or try to rebuild it. Just go ahead and make your exit. Yep. Uh, go, go enjoy life. He made plenty plenty of money. Uh, you, you're in the tech field, plenty of investments. Go enjoy yourself and let the documentary play itself out in, in the next 10, 15 years. Facts. I agree 100%. Uh, we'll be back next week with another episode. Uh, Preach Care, Preach River Shot. Uh, y'all be safe. Uh, stay out of trouble. And we'll be back next week. Happy June. Happy June, baby. We out.